Hey there, greetings to you, welcome back. This is day number 340 in our Digging Deeper calendar. Today we read Amos 3 and 4, the last few verses of Isaiah 45, and then we read Isaiah 46 and end with the little letter called Second John. So, what a full day. Let's turn to Amos chapter 3. As I said about Amos yesterday, he was wise in his methods. He condemned Syria, the Philistines, Tyre, Edom, Ammon, and Moab, before coming around to Judah and finally the northern kingdom, Israel. We also heard some of the wonderful word pictures Amos used. Amos chapter 3. Amos is speaking. People of Israel, listen to this message which the Lord has spoken about you, the entire nation that he brought out of Egypt. Of all the nations on earth, you are the only one I have known and cared for. That is what makes your sins so terrible, and that is why I must punish you for them. Heading, The Prophet's Task Amos speaks. Do two people start traveling together without arranging to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest unless he has found a victim? Does a young lion growl in his den unless he has caught something? Does a bird get caught in a trap if the trap has not been baited? Does a trap spring unless something sets it off? Does the war trumpet sound in a city without making the people afraid? Does disaster strike a city unless the Lord sends it? The Sovereign Lord never does anything without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. When a lion roars, who can keep from being afraid? When the Sovereign Lord speaks, Who can keep from proclaiming his message? Heading The Doom of Samaria Announce to those who live in the palaces of Egypt and Ashdod. Gather together in the hills around Samaria and see the great disorder and the crimes being committed there. The Lord says, These people fill their mansions with things taken by crime and violence. They don't even know how to be honest. And so an enemy will surround their land, destroy their defenses, and plunder their mansions. The Lord says, As a shepherd recovers only two legs or an ear of a sheep that a lion has eaten, so only a few will survive of Samaria's people who now recline on luxurious couches. Listen now and warn the descendants of Jacob, says the Sovereign Lord Almighty. On the day when I punish the people of Israel for their sins, I will destroy the altars of Bethel. The corners of every altar will be broken off and will fall to the ground. I will destroy winter houses and summer houses. The houses decorated with ivory will fall in ruins. Every large house will be destroyed. Amos chapter 4 Amos speaks. Listen to this, you women of Samaria, who grow fat like the well-fed cows of Bashan, who mistreat the weak, Oppress the poor and demand that your husbands keep you supplied with liquor. As the Sovereign Lord is holy, he has promised. The days will come when they will drag you away with hooks. Every one of you will be like a fish on a hook. You will be dragged to the nearest break in the wall and thrown out. Heading Israel's Failure to Learn The Sovereign Lord says, People of Israel, go to the holy place in Bethel and sin if you must. Go to Gilgal and sin with all your might. 
Go ahead and bring animals to be sacrificed morning after morning, and bring your tithes every third day. Go on and offer your bread in thanksgiving to God, and brag about the extra offerings you bring. This is the kind of thing you love to do. I was the one who brought famine to your cities, yet you did not come back to me. I kept it from raining when your crops needed it most. I sent rain on one city, but not on another. Rain fell on one field, but another field dried up. Weak with thirst, the people of several cities went to a city where they hoped to find water, but there was not enough to drink. Still you did not come back to me. I sent scorching wind to dry up your crops. The locusts ate up all your gardens and vineyards, your fig trees and olive trees. Still you did not come back to me. I sent a plague on you like the one I sent on Egypt. I killed your young men in battle and took your horses away. I filled your nostrils with the stink of dead bodies in your camps. Still you did not come back to me. I destroyed some of you as I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Those of you who survived were like a burning stick saved from a fire. Still you did not come back to me, says the Lord. So then, people of Israel, I am going to punish you. And because I am going to do this, get ready to face my judgment. Amos speaks. God is the one who made the mountains and created the winds. He makes his thoughts known to people. He changes day into night. He walks on the heights of the earth. This is his name, the Lord God Almighty. Let's turn to Isaiah 45, where we'll start reading at verse 22. Remember that in the last chapter Cyrus's name was repeatedly mentioned. God's motivation for making such bold predictions is clear. Verse 19 in the NLT says, I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner. I would not have told the people of Israel to seek me if I could not be found. I particularly like those lines. Some of the prophets the world now looks to do indeed utter obscurities and purposefully choose to keep their followers in the dark. And God refutes the contention that he is hard to find, that he has left the world and doesn't care about humans or pay attention to us. Bear that in mind today as we start at chapter 45, verse 22. Turn to me now and be saved, people all over the world. I am the only God there is. My promise is true, and it will not be changed. I solemnly promise by all that I am. Everyone will come and kneel before me and vow to be loyal to me. They will say that only through me are victory and strength to be found. But all who hate me will suffer disgrace. I, the Lord, will rescue all the descendants of Jacob, and they will give me praise. Isaiah 46 God continues to speak. This is the end for Babylon's gods. Bel and Nebo once were worshipped, but now they are loaded on donkeys, a burden for the backs of tired animals. The idols cannot save themselves. They are captured and carried away. This is the end for Babylon's gods. Listen to me, descendants of Jacob, all who are left of my people. I have cared for you from the time you were born. I am your God, and I will take care of you until you are old and your hair is gray. I made you and will care for you. I will give you help and rescue you. To whom will you compare me, says the Lord? Is there anyone else like me? 
people open their purses and pour out gold. They weigh out silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith to make a god. Then they bow down and worship it. They lift it to their shoulders and carry it. They put it in place, and there it stands, unable to move from where it is. If any pray to it, it cannot answer or save them from disaster. Remember this, you sinners. Consider what I have done. Remember what happened long ago. Acknowledge that I alone am God and that there is no one else like me. From the beginning I predicted the outcome. Long ago I foretold what would happen. I said that my plans would never fail, that I would do everything I intended to do. I am calling a man from the east. He will swoop down like a hawk and accomplish what I have planned. I have spoken, and it will be done. Listen to me, you stubborn people, who think that victory is far away. I am bringing the day of victory near. It is not far away at all. My triumph will not be delayed. I will save Jerusalem. I will bring honor to Israel there. And today we read the little letter called Second John. I wish we knew if Timothy made it to Rome in time to see Paul before he died. Was Luke still there? Paul needed that warm coat as winter was approaching and he wanted the parchment papers in particular, which were probably Old Testament scripture. That was happening around A.D. 67. Things were even worse for Christians around A.D. 90, when John wrote the two little letters of Second and Third John. Second John is written to the chosen lady, but this is a euphemism or a code word for a church. The children of the lady are the church members. We find several echoes from the book of First John in these two letters. Mears points out four basic beliefs that John keeps coming back to, which are visible in these two little letters also. 1. We must believe that Christ came in the flesh, meaning with a real human body. 2. At the same time, we must believe that Christ is deity, that is, fully God. 3. We must believe that God is love. This is a major characteristic of God and the way followers of Christ must live. And 4. We must believe that Christ is our Savior. The only way to have eternal life is to know Christ personally, not just know information about Him. Second John From the Elder To the dear lady and her children whom I truly love. And I'm not the only one but all who know the truth love you, because the truth remains in us and will be with us forever. May God the Father and Christ Jesus, the Father's Son, give us grace, mercy, and peace. May they be ours in truth and love. How happy I was to meet some of your children who live in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And so I ask you, dear lady, let all of us love one another. This is no new command I am writing you. It is the command which we have had from the beginning. This love I speak of means that we must live in obedience to God's commands. The command, as you have all heard from the beginning, is that you must all live in love. Many deceivers have gone out over the world, people who do not acknowledge that Christ Jesus came as a human being. Such a person is a deceiver and the enemy of Christ. 
Be on your guard, then, so that you will not lose what we have worked for, but will receive your reward in full. Anyone who does not stay with the teaching of Christ, but goes beyond it, does not have God. Whoever does stay with the teaching has both the Father and the Son. So then, if some come to you and do not bring this teaching, do not welcome them in your homes, do not even say, Peace be with you. For anyone who wishes them peace becomes their partner in the evil things they do. I have so much to tell you, but I would rather not do it with paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you personally, so that we shall be completely happy. The dear children of your sister send you their greetings. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, In our world today, give us the depth of love and the deep fellowship that was enjoyed by John and the believers in the church codenamed the Dear Lady. May we cooperate in ministry and support those ministries as they did. They welcomed traveling preachers into their homes and helped them to continue their journeys. May we also be vigilant so that we don't support ministries that are not genuine and that do not uphold the truth of the gospel, especially concerning Christ, that he was both fully God and fully man. Give us the same hope that the early believers had, namely, that there is a full reward waiting in heaven for us. John was not talking about their salvation. He was talking of the reward that we can lose, the rewards that you will give us because of our service to Christ. People today say not to think about such heavenly rewards. But Jesus, Peter, Paul, and John say to think of them and tell us to be on guard not to lose them. So today, help us to think less about things on earth and more about things in heaven. 